Thank you, Julie. All right, um, Cat in the Hat, would you do roll call, please? Oh, you're muted, Sonia. Still muted. There we go. Sorry about that. I'm reading off names and I thought I heard someone say muted, but uh, now I just have to find it again. That's the thing when you're Zooming, you have so many windows open. Uh, Julie Seastrom. I'm here. Uh, Jemiah Wassum. Wassman. Here. Alyssa Lane Keen. Here. Valerie Switzler. Diane Tiemann. Michael Cherry. Angela Fasana. I am here. Jennifer Jackson. Here. Melissa Montero. Becky Cantrell. Here and Marsha will not be joining today. Okay. Jory Spencer. Jamie Crane. Jesse Jackson. And Jennifer Reed. And we have quorums. Thank you so much. Um, and then we do have a couple of guests here. So wanted to acknowledge them and give our guests the chance to introduce themselves. I guess I'll just start calling on people. Uh, Sherry. Hi, happy Halloween. Sherry Burks. I'm with the Work and Ask. I'm the Director of Outreach and Professional Development with that organization. I'm glad to be uh, included. Very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Catherine. Hello, everyone. I'm Catherine Jackson. I am with the Office of Child Care, Region 10, working um, with the state of Oregon. And I appreciate the opportunity just to be here and listen in to all the great work that's happening. Thank you. Thank you. Another familiar face, Paul. Good afternoon, everyone. Paul Noski, and I'm the Regional Program Manager for the Office of Child Care Region 10, here to listen in and provide any kind of support. Good to see all your faces. Um. Okay, I see Amber. Hi, I'm Amber Lomascola. I'm work with Sherry Burks. I'm with Oregon Ask as well. I'm a master trainer on the Center for Career Development Registry and do a lot of our conference planning. But Sherry and I are looking to really up our professional development opportunities for communities all over Oregon. And we really thank you for the invitation today. Uh, Cassandra. Hi everyone, my name is Cassandra Moses, Program Specialist with the Office of Child Care, and I work with uh, some several, several lead, lead agencies in Oregon, as well as support uh, the state of Oregon. Yeah. Nice to see you all. And Colleen? Hi, Colleen Lang. I am on the Office of Child Care team with Paul and uh, glad to be here. Um, and then on the Delk side, uh, we have Joel here. So, uh, Joel, you want to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you, Dana. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Joel Metlin, he, him, his pronouns. I'm the Deputy Director of Programs for Department of Early Learning and Care. And I'm still getting up to speed and in the job for almost four months. And I'm really happy to be able to join you and just listen in today. 
Thanks, Dana. Wonderful. Um, and then I think I might have seen a couple more um, TAC members or or at least uh, folks coming on behalf of their tribes pop in. So I just wanted to make sure that they were also noted. Um, I see Malia is here and I'm not sure if it's actually Caroline or if it's Caroline and TJ. It's just TJ, unfortunately. Caroline is out doing something else right now, so but I'm on her computer. Well, yeah. Warren, we are glad to have you here. Thank you. All right. Then I think we can get things started. Um, I'm going to pull up the slide deck and get my screen share on. Can everyone see the screen? I can just leave it in. I'll find the spot. So it's back you can see it, but it's in presenter mode. Okay. Yeah, I will update that. I also uh, just was hearing some background noise. So just a reminder, if you're not already on mute, to mute yourself unless you're talking so that we don't get a bunch of uh, feedback and can hear okay. So... All right, feels like we're off to a good start, ready to get going. Um, I I think uh, everyone should have received the agenda in advance. So if you don't already know what we're gonna talk about today, um, this is pretty much it. So we'll just give an update about the presentation to the Legislative Commission on Indian Services. We're gonna talk about the draft bill language and the funding distribution methods for the Tribal Early Learning Plan and Fund. And then back in August, we had tabled the discussion about the roles of the Tribal Advisory Committee, the Oregon Tribal Early Learning Alliance, and the government to government cluster. And so we're gonna circle back to that. And we're also interested in hearing from those of you who applied for the Child Care Infrastructure Fund about how that went and if you have any feedback. And then uh, Julie suggested a space for tribal sharing, comments, questions, and feedback. So we've set up some time for that as well. And then we'll close and wrap up and um, I'll be on my way to go get some candy with my kiddo and hopefully all of you are gonna do something fun. So I also wanted to acknowledge that November is Native American Heritage Month. And we all know that our heritage isn't just this one month. It's every month, it's every day. But um, being that November is known as Native American Heritage Month, we hope that others are able to learn about our history and our very different histories and our unique stories and can celebrate this month in a good way. Um, okay, so I will also invite Alyssa Chatterjee and Julie to add to this, but just to kind of give you the overview, last month, well, actually it's still October. So earlier this month, um, we presented uh, at the Legislative Commission on Indian Services meeting, and that group consists of tribal council representatives, and many of them are the tribal chairs, and also legislators from both House and Senate. And uh, we were joined by Angie Blackwell, who stepped in as a former member of the Tribal Advisory Committee, who sat in the Early Learning Council seat, and we are very thankful that she was able to help with providing her testimony. And I, I think overall, it went really well. We shared about the work that TAC has been doing. And um, it the, the group, I think, uh, received the information very well. And um, we, we did have some follow-up with uh, documents that we've sent over to the Legislative Commission on Indian Services uh, support person to share with the tribes, basically the same thing that we've been sharing with the Tribal Advisory Committee. So there's like the draft bill language, the um, crosswalk of the language from 
when we were going through the editing process and the Dear Tribal Leader letters. So, so those were all shared. Um, and just really appreciate both Julie being there, um, who she serves on LCIS. So she was going to be there anyway, but also Angie Blackwell and her testimony, because it was really powerful because she shared from the tribal perspective. And it's just different being able to, to hear that. I think the one thing that she emphasized that was helpful is how the tribal advisory committee members were appointed by their tribal council and are the ones who have made the recommendations that the tribal early learning hub become a tribal early learning plan and fund instead. So um, now that that's the overview, I'll uh, invite Alyssa and Julie to, to share. This Julie Seastrom and uh, I'm Hannes Coos and tribal council for the Confederated Tribes of the Coos, Lower Umpqua and Sayuska. And I wear several other hats uh, in addition to that. The LCIS hat representative, uh, DELC representative, early childhood learning, um, and Otella. So one of the things that I, I, I just want to keep um, going back to um, is uh, appreciation for um, both Angie Blackwell and Sonia um, Moody Harado uh, for giving us the um, historical um, testimony. Uh, when it came time to uh, go through this process, um, uh, nothing beats uh, boots on the ground for your whole life. Uh, and they have the history um, from when uh, there was nothing um, for our tribal children to the work that they um, worked together on to create the Otella. And then uh, now through the transition that it is coming to be what it is now with Delk. Um, and the changes that it has to go through to be able to move forward. Um, I Again, I humbly, humbly thank Angie Blackwell for being able to come through it with, with clarity and to emphasize that um, the goal is still the same. It's just the process is changing. So uh, I'll be forever thankful for her. And Alyssa is, again, she's totally clear and, and engaging and, and, and informative with all kinds of details. So hats off to both of them and, and just all kind of gratitude. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. I I thought it was a great, great overview. Just appreciated the opportunity to be able to present before the Legislative Commission on Indian Services. So um, the work you all have done has been heard now by the House Early Childhood and Human Services Committee, as well as the Legislative Commission on Indian Services. So um, just appreciate the chance to to support the work and the vision you all have created. I think it was a great chance. Um, to also elevate um, the different channels we've been leveraging through uh, tribal consultation and the TAC and just give give folks a, a deeper line of sight into the TAC, which um, I know then relates to some of the follow-up we've done on the Dear Tribal Leader letters and kind of representation. So it was just a wonderful opportunity to share the work. And I appreciate Julie and Sonia being so thoughtful and how these presentations are put together and just want to echo the appreciation for for Angie stepping in um, to cover that as well. Thanks, Dana. Are there any follow-up questions about the LCIS Legislative Commission on Indian Services presentation or anything else that's been discussed so far? All right. Well, the next topic, um, I'm excited to hear from everybody about this. Um, it's about the funding piece for the Tribal Early Learning Plan and Fund. So when Otella first came about, and I think for other funding streams historically, like through ODE, the Oregon Department of Education, the funding for that was for tribes was just split evenly nine ways. And that's what the Tribal Advisory Committee had decided back in, um, I think 2021, or um, probably 2021, maybe 2022 of how to distribute the dollars. And so now coming into the 2025, 2027 biennium, 
when, which is assuming that the tribal early learning plan and fund legislation passes that that's when it would take effect is for the 25 27 biennium for the first biennium and um we wanted to know from each tribe how much you think feasibly you'd be able to spend in the first biennium and I I recognize that it was hard to extrapolate that because it's not easy to figure out how much you could spend over two years, two years in the future. And um, I appreciate all of you for thinking about it and trying to be um, thoughtful in, in considering what funding you would need. Um, and so the purpose of this discussion is to look in depth um, at the funding distribution and talk about it changing potentially to next biennium being sort of based on tribal need. Um, so we did get responses from every tribe. And when you add up the amounts, it's 4.5 million. And so if we were to just divide that evenly across the tribes, that'd be about 500,000 per tribe. However, we know that the tribes each have different needs and different levels of capacity. And so one tribe might not need to spend that much and another tribe might need to spend a lot more. So um, I guess that's the question is how do we feel about changing from an equal distribution model to having it be based on what the tribes have said that they would need to spend? Dana, can I take a quick step back? Um, so I just wanted to add a little bit of additional context. So um, we had received responses. I think the lowest amount we got was about 65,000 and the highest was up to 1.5 million. So to Dana's point, it was pretty broad ranging amongst each of the tribes. Um, and so we put forward a recommendation of kind of the average, which was about um, 500,000. This would be a recommendation to be 500,000 on top of the 69,000 that you all are already receiving with the Otella grants. Um, so this would be in addition to that. And then recognizing the 5% you all have requested to be held for administrative um, services through the Office of Tribal Affairs. Um, rather than us subtract that, we we recommended an add-on. So um, that's an additional 225,000. So our total recommendation is 4.725 million. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of add a little to that context, the wide ranging. And so um, recognizing that some tribes could easily spend double or triple this, and some tribes may struggle to spend half of this amount of 500,000, we wanted to have this conversation about the best way to approach the funding um, and the role you may want Otella to play in that. So for example, if everybody got the same amount and one tribe said, I, I know now I can't spend more than 100,000, how would the how would Otella want to be involved in determining where those additional dollars go? Um, one thing that's challenging, and I know you all are aware with, with the state budgets, is um, we can't leave money on the table. So to the comment here about permanent, our recommendation is that the 4.75 million, 725 million is a permanent funding source. The way we choose to distribute the funds could look one way in 25, 27, but you all may elect that it look different in future by any yeah. So I just wanted to clarify that the funding source itself um, is proposed to remain permanent, um, but we would not be able to, if a tribe was going to leave money on the table, ideally we would give those remaining dollars to another tribe or distribute that equally or in some fashion, we couldn't let $200,000 stay on the table because that really puts um, the investment at risk for the future biennium. We don't want this to look like a, a fund that's underutilized. So I just wanted to offer some of that context as you all consider how you'd want the dollars to be distributed next biennium. Thanks, Dana. Dana, can I ask a question? Definitely, go for it. Alyssa, I just want to make sure I understand you correctly. Okay, I think that uh -huh. what, you're, what, you, what I heard you say was that uh, you recommend us asking for the 
four point five or four point seven to five million as a permanent um amount, and that the uh, we don't have to make the decision at the moment as far as distribution is concerned. You're advising us um that we go with the idea of need as opposed to equal amount, but we don't have to make that decision today, if I understand you correctly. Yes, and 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 not even necessarily advising, just just noting that there are some tribes who've been very clear that they they likely could not spend this amount of funding. And so we wanted to make sure that while we're recommending this level of investment for consideration, um, we don't want to lose sight of the fact that some tribes may not be have the capacity to spend that level of resourcing next biennium, so right away. So I don't believe a decision has to be made today. The more information we have to share with the governor's office while she's developing her recommended budget, the better, so that they know how dollars could be spent. But this can be an ongoing conversation that can happen well into next biennium as the program evolves and as the, the plan continues to be developed. Is it okay to ask another question? Please. Um, for um, Sonia and everybody else that has been uh, doing this so many more years than myself, um, which way is better as far as the nine tribes are concerned um, to uh, go with a, a need-based uh, choice or um, a block sum? Well, I... <clears throat> I think it's just very difficult. I think that the tribes have kind of stated what they feel that they can expend in that amount of time. And as we saw with some of the grants, some tribes were able to spend um, money and then others struggled with the different amounts that were coming down from different agencies that I, I still think that tribes struggle in seeing how this money, like if we know that this money is permanent and you can use it for staffing and you can use it for raising pay and you can use it for um, repairs to your classrooms, you can use it for what your needs are. I think it's a little bit easier. If we just look at the, look at the way we spent the last money, which, um, we didn't want to put into making permanent decisions if we didn't know the money was permanent coming down. So we filled needs and gaps. But if we do know it's a steady funding stream, and then you can look at long-term things like sustainable waging, additional classroom support, you know, additional building, um, structural issues inside and outside, I think then it looks very different. So when you look at it from that, I think the 500,000 could be because I think all of us know that our early education, our um, uh, teachers and that are underfunded. Um, and in, in some part, because of state money, I can talk to our Salem site. We used to pay better than the city and county programs, but now because of them utilizing state money, they... Um, pay more than we do so we have people leaving our employment to take jobs there because the wage is a couple dollars an hour more which makes a difference for your family so it, it's a very tough question because I would love every tribe to be able to see the broad picture of how this could benefit their community and again raising wage and that but it's hard if we don't know it's sustainable and that it's permanent so I think the conversation is just difficult when, when you look at it from that way. So if I understand you right, it's something that we got to put a little more thinking into before we give a response. Thank you so much. I And I think that it's exactly that, Julian, each person taking it back to their tribe to to say those broad um, things that the money can be used for, because, you know, again, if you just think of it, of what tribe spent it on last time, um, you know, is probably very different even from this year, 69,000, you know, um, 
and being told that that money is going to be permanent, it, uh, you know, will look different for, for people. And so now when you think of a much larger, you know, like 500,000, you really have to tell the powers to be, you know, what it could be used for. I also like what you said about um, teacher pay. Um, and, you know, you know, like when you're, you're thinking of the, the zero to, to eight uh, children and the teacher to student ratio, um, they would be like so surprised to be able to be paid um, a livable working wage, um, you know, to be able to serve the number of children that's um, the best number, you know, the, the teacher to student ratio is much lower uh, for the younger ones. So they might have, you know, four to six kids, but they're working full time and they get full time pay. So, you know, something like, like the 500,000 would allow, you know, for that to happen. So uh, that was good to hear. So question for Delk, um, that's something that just popped in under my hat, um, that <laughs> um, could the funds be used to go towards um, credentialing our current existing staff if we have aides that want to become teachers or we have, could some of these funds be used to set aside for educational purposes? Yeah, that's a great question. And you definitely could. I dropped what I just put on the screen. I dropped it into the chat as well. Um, this is just a reminder of potential allowable uses that are laid out in the tribal early learning plan and also some examples of what was spent in the past from the Otella grants from this year and last biennium. And so professional development, being able to, to do some kind of credentialing, um, having contracts uh, with providers for child care, like anything in early learning and care, whether that is uh, direct service, uh, professional development, materials, supplies, um, bringing in books and in, in heritage languages and even creating those books or other materials in the first place. Um, those are all things that could work with these funds. And on top of it, these would match whatever your tribe's indirect rate is. So in some cases, like uh, Sonia, you've shared about selects that to hire someone, you have to pay that indirect rate. So in the past and in a lot of other cases, when it comes to state funds, you can't uh, go above the cap, which for our Dell funds is 15%, generally speaking. And so that would allow potentially for more hiring. So, um, you know, there could be a third person in a classroom, for instance, to help with uh, behaviors that are difficult or just to, to be another support person. So. There's many, many things you could do. And I don't want to scroll through this document too fast and make anyone dizzy or anything, but it is also in the chat, so you can pull it up there. And Chris can correct me if I'm wrong, but but what we've really tried to do in the legislative concept, which I know we've we've shared now, is um is have not be exhaustive in the legislation, but give you all the flexibility. And so if there is something that you we hasn't been surfaced or you don't feel like is reflected and even in this document that Dana's sharing, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's off the table. We still have a lot of work to do through the plan and through rulemaking that we'll be doing with you all. But Chris, anything else you'd add there? These are just intentionally drafted very broad, um, knowing that these are big categories so that they can be catch-alls so that you can do more of the dreaming and the planning for the activities that actually fit within these buckets. So just echoing what Alyssa said, there's a lot of flexibility with these funds in these categories. I also want to point out that it doesn't have to change to be based on how much a tribe needs or thinks they could spend. It could always go back to being divided equally in the future. Um, you know, it could be something that Otella tries for 
the 25 27 biennium and just maybe decides that it would work better to just go back to how it was in the past um or maybe even continue like that if it does work out well so that's another thing to consider is that it doesn't have to be forever and i think that's one of the great things about what we've created in the legislative uh the language is that it is flexible and it allows for change as needed for tribes and as needs shift. PJ. And surprise, surprise, Caroline has joined me. So um, a few questions I guess I have. Uh, first and foremost, I was trying to, I had somebody walk in here, so I missed some of the pre-meeting. So on the last slide, you had said there were some folks who, uh, some tribes, so are you telling me that all nine tribes are taking advantage of these dollars in 2025? Um, or, and, and is this what's already been determined that you're going to go with the 500K per tribe? Is that how, am I understanding that right by reading this? That's this is my first question. Yeah, so what this is, is this reflects the recommendation. So the governor's office had asked us for a recommendation of how much to invest in the tribal early learning fund. And so after meeting with each tribe, we recommended um, an equal split of 500,000 per tribe. And that was based on the conversations we've had over the last couple of years, which, which in which the tax said, distribute equally. We don't want to have to compete with one another. We want this to be, uh, we don't want it to be based on geography, number of families. It should be equal distribution. So this is what's been recommended. We don't know if this is, if there will be sufficient funding for this to be included in the governor's recommended budget that comes out December 2nd. Um, but really what we wanted to ask is if, if a tribe is unable to spend all their funding within a biennium, regardless of what amount we we receive, how would the TAC want to redistribute or address the unspent funds? That's really what it comes down to. So this is two years? Yeah, so- It's gonna be two years. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are, are, the, these are uh, funds that can be used for Head Start and daycare or- Yes. Is that how I'm understanding it? So it could be used for either or? Yes, broad, broad uses. It could be used if you have a Head Start program there, child care program. It could be used to distribute books to families. It could be used to support oh, your yeah, educators. Your, yeah. Your list that you had there. Yeah, okay. Yep, that whole, yeah, long list. So we won't know, so tribes won't know how much money they actually get until after December 5th is what I'm hearing, or December, whatever you just mentioned a few seconds ago. <laughs> we so. won't. We still have to go through the legislative session. So after December 2nd, we'll know what's in the governor's recommended budget, but the yeah. legislature still will have to determine what the final amount is. So when will these funds be available to folks? They would be available. Or not to. <laughs> July 1 of 25. Okay. So so uh, I know we're kind of late comers because I know uh, Valerie Switzler has been the designated uh, person. And so... Um, I just saw, I think on the chat, if you go in the chat, that each tribe was getting 69,000 yep. for the 21-23. So there was not anything for 23-24? No, so uh, they received 133,000 in 21-23 and 69,000 in 23-25. Um, and that 69,000 is permanent. And so that's what at a minimum, every tribe would receive next biennium. Interesting. So we just took over the budget this year. So I'm, I'm gonna need to probably, uh, and Valerie is ill. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. so uh, I, I just need to track to see what was done with these funds. And I don't know if they were been giving you reports. And that's an issue that we might have to talk on a one-to-one. -one, yeah. Because I don't want to get all the other tribes uh, involved for uh, something internally with us. I, I just need to track to see where those funds are at. Yes. Happy to meet with you. And 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 anyone, if anyone kind of wants to revisit 
how dollars have been spent, what information we've collected. I know we talked at um, the government to government education cluster um, this quarter about uh, just the list of what every tribe has spent these resources on. So we have all of that information and we'd be happy to meet with anyone to, to go through that, any of the tribes. Great questions. And I also um, just wanted to mention what Chris added into the chat. Just a reminder that the tribal early learning plan would have flexible dollars in that you can use them to meet any of what's on this list and you can also blend them or braid them and combine them with other funding streams that you have um state tribal or federal as long as they align with the plan Yeah, I think for us, we just would like to probably set some time, set aside some time with somebody to kind of go over, you know, again, where the past dollars, what have been done, what, it, what you know, again, just because we have a bunch of stuff, I think that we could be utilizing these dollars for that Caroline are, and I are not fully aware of, you know, where these dollars have gone or how much of them are left or what, you know. So I, I think they already asked us for a date to meet on the tribal consultation. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, so. I think we requested that at the last cluster meeting. So I think they're just waiting for us to give them a date. Guys, nice. if you can see my finger and where it's pointing. <laughs> so, all righty, thank you. I think that's, um, you know, again, I like I said, I had somebody step in here before Caroline did, and I was chatting with them and kind of missed some of the things. And again, I always feel like I'm hijacking these meetings because I come here and I did this the last time, I think, and I just had a bunch of questions that I got answered. And now I'm here again doing the same thing. So I apologize to the other folks because sometimes I feel, I think I did this the last time where I had all these questions about what was even going on in this. And now I'm starting to get a better handle. So thank you. No worries. I We appreciate the questions and um, I can email you as well, just seeing if we can set up some time or since we did have the Dear Tribal Leader letter go out, you can respond to that, whatever is more convenient for you, because we'd be ha happy to go over um, the, the past and get you totally up to speed, but still ask questions, even, even next time. So um, I guess... Uh, Looking at this, there's a lot of considerations. And so as Julie already covered earlier, this isn't something that we have to make a decision on today, um, but it's something, something to think about. And so we can continue to think about it and, and circle back to it in future meetings. And I also wanna just see if anyone else who hadn't had the chance to give their thoughts or, or share an opinion about the potential change in funding distribution has anything to add or that they'd like to bring. Yeah, what Alyssa put in the chat is is exactly right. The question, um, how would the TAC like unspent funds to be distributed? So we'll keep thinking on that one. Dana, is that something that you could email us that question is, is probably the one that you want us to address the most and then all of us can, can email you back our, our thoughts when we get it more clear in our heads what we want to do with that? Absolutely. Yeah, I can do that. Thank you. This yeah. is Angela Fasana from Grand Ronde. And I think if I just had to off the cuff without thinking a whole lot more about it, it would probably be, um, you know, that I, I think that you would look at each tribe gets theirs and, and then whatever balance is left towards year two, um, 
would be sort of what I would do. So every tribe kind of puts in for their funds up to 500,000. And then we look at, you know, whether or not it's all spent and then how it's divvied up. I think you would then announce to us that we have X amount of dollars left and kind of give another chance for all the tribes to say, oh, well, this project has come up now and I could use this much. And, and then we would just have to see if that amount came out to more than what was left over or unspent. So I know it's not a solidified process where we would say X amount of dollars or we would split it evenly or we wouldn't split it evenly. It's not that clean, um, but it would be a way to utilize the funds and not put any pressure on tribes to utilize them um, if they can't, because then I would know that if I can't do something, that money is just going to be redistributed to other tribes who may come up with another project. Uh, and that doesn't feel feel uh, as wrong as maybe just giving it back altogether. So I think we just, that's just my suggestion, that as we get to year two and look at what's left unspent, tribes have an opportunity to put in for what they think they could spend it for in that last year just um, a possible place to start a conversation. I, I agree with that, um, Angela, because it allows if tribes still have money, it's also a time that could allow them to say they're not going to spend that much and other tribes to um, say that they could utilize more. So uh, I, I have a couple questions about that. Um, what... Uh, like our fiscal department, they don't um, report our funds being spent that timely. Um, so if we get to the end of year one, and um, I know I've spent a certain amount of money, but it's not reported, how do you how do you make up for that um, gap in um, between the fiscal department and the reporting to the state to determine what amount is left? And then also, uh, who decides, who's going to decide what projects are funded? <clears throat> Sorry, this was Jennifer Jackson from the Farm of Tribes. Jennifer, thank you. Those are both really good questions. And I'm also kind of wondering how we would decide the projects that are, are funded. Um, it does say in like very broad terms in the draft language that's been written that the Oregon Tribal Early Learning Alliance, which will be, you know, two, two representatives from each tribe would uh, determine how the funds from the Tribal Early Learning Fund are granted and spent. So it would be, I think, this group that could come up with the guidelines um, as far as the dissonance between when rep reporting on the fiscal side happens and you knowing how much you you had spent. I mean, it, there's a couple things we could do. Um, we could try like just a checking in individually uh, on the program side if you do track your budget and I know everyone's offices work differently so that might not be the right way to go about it um, it could be uh, having a different structure for reporting and like maybe instead of looking at how much has been spent halfway through, it could be like the following quarter or something like that to allow enough time to pass for all the reporting on the fiscal piece to catch up. But um, I mean, those are just things off the top of my head. Those aren't for sure answers. And even then there's still a lot more work that would have to happen in between. I have a question. Um, would it be helpful if we took kind of the broad outline of Angela's suggestion um, and put a proposal together and kind of associated key questions or decisions for for us, for folks to react to, or would you prefer we kind of continue to talk through it kind of in each meeting? I, I know for me, it's helpful to have something to look at, but I just wanted to offer that if, if 
having a write-up would be useful and we'd be happy to work on that or just hold space for the conversation in each meeting. Dana, is it okay to say something? Yeah, of course. Uh, I would agree with that. Um, the suggestion that Angela had and that uh, Sonia uh, agreed with and that kind of thing and for um, Alyssa to be kind enough to like do an outline and, and shoot it to us for consideration and if we could, you've done that before where you give us, you give us something and you ask us to respond to it. So we work back and forth through the email. So, cause everybody is wearing too many hats and you, you got to get them all stick, keep them all on your head and keep going. So if you, if y'all are, are open for doing that, I think it would be helpful. Thank you. Yeah, you're definitely right about wearing multiple hats and Today, Sonia's is the best. Anyway, moving on. Um, yes, we can do that for sure. Um, and so I'll put that, I'll work on getting something put together and then also have that go out in an email, probably maybe not the same one as the um, recap from this meeting, but we will do that. This is Angela again. I just wanted to kind of offer up a potential about how we would decide in that last year um, I think we would decide as a group and, and maybe we review all of the proposals and and then we say we have X amount of dollars. Um, you know, obviously my thought would be how can we equally distribute it as best we can or how does everybody get some um, to help with any of the projects they present. So maybe there's a scoring rubric that would help us to kind of determine which ones are most closely aligned with the goals in the plan. Um, or we just, um, I think if we get together, we can find a way to fairly, you know, make an assessment about how we distribute the funds. Um, I guess I just have a lot of confidence in us if we, all of our representatives can get together and, you know, advocate. If we have a project on the table, we can advocate for that, but we can also realizing that it'd be best if we can, um, so our main goal is to support all of the tribes. So how can we best do that with whatever pot of money is left? Uh, it shouldn't be just advocating for our own tribes. And I really think we could do that if we all got to the table together. Thank you. Yeah, I that would be a really cool concept. I like that idea, but... Um... It would be up to Otella to decide like how the scoring rubric works. So there'd be a lot of work that would, which is fine, but there's there's going to need to be the building out of this, which is kind of what we were hoping to talk about a little bit later today about like roles and responsibilities. So um, that ties in really closely. And thank you for sharing your idea. You always have great ideas. So we're, we're so glad that you're part of this group. Okay. Thank you. I I mean, I just feel like to me, um, it serves us all if everybody gets a chunk of the change to improve their programs. It's better for all of us together as the nine tribes in the state. So um, even though a certain amount of funds may not come to each of our tribes individually, if we are making an impact statewide as nine tribes, that's what we should really be focused on when we decide how to spend out any remaining dollars. And just kind of keeping that as our, our North Star. Yeah, I, I always want to say I, I support the, the concept of um, just a, a, a guaranteed minimum allocation with a flexible redistribution um, along with what um what Sonia and, and Angela are are uh discussing. I think it's a great idea. And maybe there could be like a redistribution app application for each tribe to submit and just base the metrics on that and have a uh, like a uh, a process, a project proposal for the tribe to present, uh justification the need for the projects that the uh uh uh, a subcommittee within the TAC could review, uh, which each tribe has representation. I think that's a great idea, but this my two cents. So. Thank you. 
Thank you, Jemiah and Caroline slash TJ. Back to just TJ again, Caroline, I had to go do an interview somewhere. So um, I, I really, uh, you know, I appreciate the, uh, I'm reading the chat here um, and I really appreciate Jemiah's and the others who have spoken, but I also find it interesting that if we do put, let's say we do what's suggested over here, and then in the future, some tribes decide they don't want to use their full 500,000 or whatever, and it gets redistributed. Um, I, I, for me, just seems like we're going to ask to do a lot more work than is really necessary. If tribes in the beginning, from the right from the get-go, say, because most tribes are going to say, like I, I, for instance, can say, I want to use, I need, I'm going to show you how I'm going to spend this $500,000. But essentially, I really need seven hundred fifty thousand dollars to to actually get to what I'm going to get to. So if you do that in the beginning and say, okay, what are your needs? Even though you know you're only getting five hundred thousand, if you say you need six hundred or five twenty or five fifty or whatever, and then some tribes decide, hey, we don't need the full five hundred thousand, then it comes back to you guys. Instead of having to go through a whole new application and a whole new process, just say, hey, these four tribes over here. Uh, you know, or six tribes, or let's say two tribes don't want all their money. So two tribes give you $100,000 back each. So you have $200,000 to give to the other seven tribes, and you just give it out to them, just like you did the 500000 You just equally give it out to them and say, okay, here's, you know, whatever, 20000 or however many thousand more that you get. Um, for I mean, for me, it's just like, you're adding more work to people who have multiple hats who are doing multiple things. And it's easier, and I guess, for me to just say, hey, I would rather tell you I need 720000 in the beginning. If you give me 500000 great, and I get more from you after the fact, then that's amazing. But rather than saying, okay, TJ, you got your 500000 and then in a month or two, somebody says, well, I can only spend so much. Well, then here you go, TJ. Here's another application you have to fill out. I mean, in all honesty... The time that it's going to take to fill that out, I'm just going to be happy you gave me the 500000 And if the money is already allocated and set aside for tribes, then why would we have to go and fight for it again? Because essentially, you're just having to go to fight for who's who's got the best plan put together at that time. And just instead of just saying, hey, you guys all wanted, you know, whoever said that they wanted extra money, raise your hand, right? And then, and then by that time, Delk or whoever makes these decisions on this money can say, okay, four of the nine tribes said they wanted extra money if it's available. How can we distribute it to them rather than having to go out and show you that I, you know, the costs that I need and what I need it for. And if I just put that all up front and the first thing you send out to me, then that's going to be a lot easier. So um, again, my two cents, uh, take it for what it's worth. I just think that making things, I'm a, I'm a firm believer of working smarter, not harder. So um, if we can get this, especially if we're still in the the beginning phases of this or trying to figure out how to get these things done, it's for me, it would just be easier or I guess simpler to think of it that way than trying to make people do an application, then another application or another thought process. And then so that, but again, that's just my two cents. So thank you. This is Angela again, and I think that is an excellent um <laughs> Excellent idea. Thank you so much. Definitely would not want to do two applications. Yeah, I'm, I like to resonate some agreement with what TJ is saying as well, because I'm uh, with uh, the thought in the back of my mind, I'm, I'm also trying to not to over ask here, you know, uh, and, and take away with what maybe other tribes might need. So I appreciate the equal distribution concept, but um, uh, so I could perceive in the next two years, we also have a similar uh, projects that would, would exceed 500,000. So it's, um, I, I, you know, I'd, I'd rather work, uh, not have two applications myself as well, because I know we would need support uh, beyond that amount. But again, you know, it's also, I appreciate the the concept of the the equal distribution as well. So it's um, is this something uh, along with the early uh, uh, learning plan and funds request for uh, uh, an, an explanation of how each tribe is 
plan to use this funding for their projects? Is this is could we just, just each tribe submit a, a more detailed request now and base the distribution on th that request in some fashion or is I think um we need we need the legislation to pass to allow us the authority to have the plan and the fund and, and hopefully get more money than just the sixty nine thousand. That being said, um, Jemaya, you're making the comment too about like you know you have projects well exceeding five hundred thousand and TJ your point of what if you need you know seven hundred and twenty, um, even if there isn't enough funding to to resource all of those plan, that's also going to be really helpful information to report back to the legislature to push back against this narrative that the dollars aren't needed. If, if we can show there's actually quite a bit of, of need and planned capa capacity and, and uh, planned projects. So I think from a legislative strategy perspective, it doesn't hurt to let us know what you all are thinking and what it would cost so that if we get, and I know we're, I think we're going to maybe spend some time talking about what this looks like with legislative session, um, assuming this bill is a, a approved to move forward. Um, but I don't think we'd be in a place where we could have identified every piece of information we would need in order to say this counts as your application. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I really, oh, TJ, go ahead. Sorry, I keep raising my hand. Um, so again, Alyssa, I hear you on that point, but I also think it would be good for Delk or whoever's in charge of sending these dollars out to folks to, to start at least visualizing or come up with some with some ideas or questions that you could kind of give us a heads up on to know what we need to look out for and what we need to. So so that way, when the application does come after legislature goes through and we're allocated, you know, you, you determine that they give us all these funds. I always like to think positive, not negative. So I'm assuming it's going to happen and it's going to go that route. Um, so that way we know exactly, or we kind of have a template in our own mind, because like I said, like you guys said, mentioned before, a lot of us wear a lot of different hats. So the sooner we can see like just an outline of what may be, you know, what may be required or what is asked of us, especially if we go with the, we're going to split it between nine tribes. I mean, for me, I don't, when I hear an equal split, that makes life so much easier. And I don't think that it needs to be a whole heap in application. It's just, yeah. hey, what are you gonna spend your money on? Give me a budget and that should be good enough. And I mean, again, I find it really interesting as I continue to step into my role that I'm stepping into it and some of the other things I'm doing outside of work that in my belief, I don't I don't feel that we need to explain anything to anybody. We've mm -hmm. been, the nine tribes of Oregon have been, um, left to the side or pushed to the side for so long uh, I think the state of Oregon should be happy and proudly giving us dollars to say here go and better your community rather than oh I need you to tell me detail by detail what you're going to spend your money yes because my facility is 33 to 35 years old and if I had if I could get enough money somewhere I would go out and build a whole new facility mm -hmm. because every day our early childhood education center needs something fixed. And right now we're in, we're trying to fix a new boiler. We're trying to fix our heating and you know, our heating for the kids. So there's dollars out there that I, I mean, we'll find a way to spend the dollars. And that's, you know, again, I can only speak for my tribe, but I'm sure that's every tribe in Oregon that could say, heck, I have money that I have needs right now that I, if you sent me $500,000 tomorrow, it would be spent by the end of the year, end of the year easily just because yeah. of there's that many things for people to do. So for me, you know, again, I just hope that you'll send something that's an outline. So Caroline, I, Caroline and I, and whoever, you know, the other two that are in charge of ECE here for us say, Hey, this is what we, this is what they're sending us. What are we going to do to utilize these dollars? So when you do send that application and again, I use the term application loosely because realistically it should just be something that says, Hey, try here's your five hundred thousand dollars. Tell us what you're going to do with it. Not an application where I feel that I'm being judged or that I'm being no I have to be, You know, I mean, that's when I hear application, that's what I think about. I don't. If it's equal distribution, it's equal yep. distribution. You're saying here you go. Tell me how you're going to spend your money. Yep. So, um, yeah. I mean, again, I I apologize because I don't. I mean, I don't normally go and talk like this forever on these things, but. <laughs> 
these things start getting in the back of my mind and I start thinking of things and how I could utilize these dollars. And uh, sure. I mean, and, and much like everybody else, I think our, our kids are our future that, you know, Native Americans general say that all the time, our next seven generations, and that's what these kids are. And that's what we should be looking forward to. So uh, for me, that's where I get a little amped up and one I'm like, come on, let you know, this shouldn't be a, yeah, I think somebody mentioned it before. I don't think that the tribe should be fighting each other, we should be finding a way to work together to yep. better all my tribes. So that's just my thought process. Thank you, TJ. Yeah, and I'll, I'll to... try to lower my hand and keep it lowered, but <laughs> no, it's a good point. And Dana, I'm wondering maybe at the next meeting or or we can put it on the docket if we could just lift back up the current approach for the for these funds because there's 69,000 already going out to tribes. And so what what are tribes required to submit right now? And is that a good starting point? Is that already too burdensome? I, I wonder if we could start there because to your point, TJ, the goal is not to add more layers before you all can access these funds. The goal is to have a flexible way for you all to spend the money however you need. And if your water heater breaks in the middle of the biennium and it, you know, we don't want you to have to say, sorry, it wasn't on our original plan. Can we amend it? Right. We want to give you all the flexibility to put the dollars where you want them. That's what you all have told us you want to be able to do. So we could start with current state um, and see if that needs to be scaled back or if that is sufficient. Um, and, and then TJ, to your point, once we land that, that, that can kind of give everybody a sense of what information we'll likely be requesting, assuming we get this legislation to pass and we we see a, an increased investment in funding. Yeah, I can definitely do that. Um, and it just makes me think because of other grants, like what would it look like if we made it like what you have to do for Otella now, if you have other grants, what your reporting looks like for those. Um, because this is something that I think it's probably been a discussion around longer than I've been alive. But like, there is a lot of reporting and, and between different agencies, the coordination doesn't really exist. So if there is something like this is just totally different funding stream, but for early literacy, like, is there a way that DELC and ODE could align the way that our reporting is so that you're not having to do a report for them and then a report for us asking almost exactly the same things and then you have your head start report and then if you have like preschool promise or equity fund like you have to do those two like how can we make it better because it's all part of the part of being able to put the money towards what your direct service is like what you're actually trying to do and not all of the administrative burdens that just get in the way of the work. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm going to make a, a spreadsheet uh, with with some of this stuff in there and bring that for, for next time. Um, Julie, go ahead. I just wanted to say, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to leave everybody because there's something that I got to do at 2.30. So I wanted to say thank you uh, to everybody for um, the work that you've been able to um, to do today. And uh, Dana, will you like email me anything you need me to do that I'm going to miss um, by leaving now, please? And thank you, Alyssa. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for being here, Julie. And I'll follow up with you if there's anything, anything outstanding and keep you posted. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. That was a really good discussion, and I have some things on my to-do list. I also recognize where we're at on the agenda, and we have 15 minutes left, so um, I'll follow up on those things, um, and we'll put together uh, some more information to help make these decisions and continue to have the discussion. Um, I wanted to give an update about the legislative concept itself and the draft language. Um, and I don't know why this is doing it. Okay, hopefully my screen, everyone can see my screen. Um, all of the changes that 
the Tribal Advisory Committee recommended in our meetings in September, we were able to incorporate those into the language. And so the just the, the key points of those ones, um, the term plan child is used instead of plan student. We have a definition for caregiver and that definition is really broad. Uh, so um, parents or caregivers could participate as advisory members and the uh, flexibility in strategies was added in um, adding another, uh, there's A, B, C, D, and so we added E to achieve any other objective as identified by rule. So when we're after the legislation passes, then the rulemaking process, that's where we'll come up with the rules and that are gonna further define the plan and objectives. And in there, if there's more than what was already laid out um, which is in the, the draft that we sent earlier today. Um, we have the flexibility to do that and flexibility is always good. Um, the chair structure is also pulled out. So we don't have to say that uh, we have a chair and a co-chair. It's basically just that there's quorum when five, when a majority of tribes are present and it has like really boilerplate type language that doesn't really affect us like that we'll meet at a time and place that most of the members agree to so nothing earth shattering there um and i'm really thankful that we had a great drafter to work with from legislative council who um worked through all of the feedback that tech had and was able to incorporate it and also i know kate dennison's not in this meeting today, but she helped a whole bunch. Um, our government affairs manager or legal affairs. Okay, no, Chris is legal affairs and she helped a lot too. So thanks to to both of you along the way. Um, actually, I should go back real quick. Are there any questions about these specific updates or the entire draft in general that we shared earlier today? And Jane, I know that Kate isn't here today, but just for the, the tax awareness, um, this is the final draft as it sits right now. We're still waiting for from for approval from the governor's office to introduce this into session. Um, but this is the draft, if approved, that will be first introduced in to session. Um, we'll know in early December if it's been approved for introduction, and so. Um, if this bill is then introduced, there's still time to modify during session if it is introduced, but this is how it would be introduced if approved in early February, in early December, sorry. Yeah, thank you for adding that. And I'm actually going to because this part would take a much longer time than our discussion, I'm going to just skip over to the calendar and um, that correlates exactly with what Chris was saying. Um, so with with where we're at, we're already, I can't believe November starts tomorrow, uh, but we have our attack meeting on the 13th and um, then we'll continue to meet on the second Wednesday of every month. And then in, January, that's when the session begins. We'll have some more to talk about regarding legislative session and um, what kind of role TAC members can play in uh, going to hearings or providing testimony and things like that uh, when we meet in November. But um, that will last through June. And so hoping for July that that's when the tribal early learning plan and fund are in statute and are a real thing. We've been talking about it for like over a year now. So it's really exciting. And uh, thanks Alyssa for putting your information in the chat. So um, if 
since she won't be here, make sure to reach out to her if you have any questions between then and now, or let me know and I can be the go between. Um, we've done a lot. We've talked about a lot. Um, are there any questions about what our timeline here looks like? So hopefully in December, we'll be able to um, have the bill introduced in the draft form that you've all seen. And um, it should probably be sometime in January or February when there's a hearing on the bill in the House. And um, that's not guaranteed, but roughly that's what we'd probably expect. And then following that, there would be hearing in the Senate. So sometime between March and May, um, it's hard to exactly predict the timelines, but just to give you something to think about um, when there would be public hearing on the bill. And so we'll, like I said, we'll talk more about that in the next meeting, but just kind of planting the seed now. And just in the interest of time, there's probably time to go over the child care infrastructure fund. If anyone here applied for it, we'd really be interested in hearing your feedback about the process. Did anyone apply for it? Hi, Dana. This is Becky from Coquel. Um, We applied for it, but we applied for the planning part of it. Um, and the process was pretty, I mean, it's pretty easy. There's a lot of resources to, um, to, to submit the application and um, trainings going up to it. So, I mean, I felt like it was probably one of the, the best ones yet. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that, Becky. I'm really glad to hear it. Uh, Dina, this is Jemai. Um, I didn't get a chance to apply for the first round of the Child Care Infrastructure Fund, but I certainly want to apply for the second round. I think it's coming up in winter. I just had a question on, is the opportunity to apply for the pro the planning and the infrastructure, uh, like the uh, new construction, uh, are there opportunities for both funding sources to apply in winter 25? Yeah, so um, my understanding is that you could apply for both. Um, well, let me rephrase that. You could apply for either planning or the construction in the next round of funding, but it would just be one or the other that you would apply for. You wouldn't apply for both at the same time. Does that make sense? Yes. And and do you, oh, do you generally, oh, sorry, I have one more question. Do you generally, uh, are those that, that receive the, the, the planning funding, are they more likely to receive the construction funding? Like the new construction funding, or is it kind of what are your odds if you didn't get the, the planning funding? Is there? Good question. I'm not actually sure if there's a difference in the odds, but I can look into it and get back to you on that. I appreciate it. In fact, we should probably see if we can have either someone from Business Oregon or Northwest Native Chamber come back. Um, it was great that Northwest Native Chamber was able to present in September. So if we can bring them back 
before the next round opens, I think that would probably be helpful. Um, they'd probably have answers to those kinds of questions. And I know that they're there for um, still supporting and getting anyone who's interested in applying in the next round uh, prepared for, for doing that. Um, in the follow-up email, I can include their information again as well. Great, thank you. Yeah, great questions. Thank you, Jemiah. Yeah, this is TJ. Um, if I remember right, this is this is the one where they were on that day and then it was due that night or like the next day or something like that. Um, so I think we did apply for the planning portion of it um, or the planning piece because we were actually going to apply for the whole thing, but there was a lot more into it that was required that you couldn't just get right offhand. So uh, for us, I think we just went ahead with the planning, turned in what we could, and hopefully we'll hear back from them. I don't know. Um, but I also told, I think in this meeting or with that lady, I had seen again somewhere right after um, that I'll, again, I always advocate that I think a lot of these places when it comes to giving money to the tribes should just be setting tri tribal set-asides across the board for folks to not have to go out and compete for dollars from a tribe. But similar to what we were talking about earlier, having a certain amount of money that you know you're going to get and set it aside for tribes. And if they choose to use it, they do. And if they don't, then you reallocate it to other tribes. And that was what I had told the lady from Business Oregon or the chamber, wherever she was from, that I don't remember where she was from. But um, so, yeah, that was kind of my two cents. I thought the even for the planning, it was a little lengthy. I didn't really care for the, the but I also was under a deadline of trying to get it in. So, I mean, if we would have known about it a little bit sooner, I think the lady came in the day before and then we like it was due the next day or we seen her the next week or something. But um, yeah, I think just for us, Caroline and I sat down really quick and did it um, and then had some conversation or dialogue with, via Zoom with uh, one of the ladies from the chamber. Um, but it was tedious, but I, again, you know, when you're asking for dollars, I would expect it to be somewhat tedious, but I also would hope that we would find some way to, to make it where you don't have to go out and fight for those dollars. Because like I mentioned before, I bet you all nine tribes have a need um, for some sort of dollars in there, whether it's the early learning centers or whether it's an education or whatever it may be. I'm sure there's, you know, there, there should be um, a way to do that across the board. And I would hope at some point, in the next hundred years or whatever it may be that all these different uh, people who work for the state or even the federal government, you know, who work through the state come up with some sort of plan where they have those tribal set asides for the nine tribes of Oregon. So, uh, but yeah, I thought it was, it was tedious, but we got it done. And again, that's kind of where we left it. So. Thank you for sharing. Um, I'm really glad that you were able to apply, even though you didn't, get the opportunity to do it until like the day before um, from not knowing about it. So I, I think that also, I mean, to clarify the funds for the child care infrastructure uh, funding, it's not coming from DELC. It's coming from Business Oregon. So it's another agency. And um, we do have a the technical assistance, which is something that we've contracted out with for Northwest Native Chamber and um, I can't think of what the other one is um, to provide for us the first the, children's finance. Thank you. I don't know why it just wouldn't come to me. Um, I guess I need more sugar. So anyway, the uh, that's the the technical assistance piece and the funds themselves. I I don't disagree with you about having a tribal set aside. Um, if there's any spaces to advocate for that, I would recommend it. And of course, that's something that we'll, we've brought up and we'll continue to talk about um, so that maybe there'll be tribal consultation on it. And if it continues to be a funding source in the future, um, maybe we'll see that down the road. Thanks for being here, Angie. And Jemaya, everyone's hopping off now because it's uh, 2.30 and that's when our meeting's over. So thanks everyone for being here.
thanks for all of the great discussion. We really appreciate it. And I'll start getting follow-up material to you all in the coming days. So enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Bye. Bye. Thank you, guys.